literally a communist. Um, this is your colleague, isn't it, um, Aaron <coughs> Bastani, Ash Sarkar? Yeah. Um, and you have produced, rather helpfully, <laughs> yeah. um, this T-shirt. This Can is you just read a it? prototype, yeah, Can just you, to be clear. I, I'm li just to be it's clear. It's a I'm literally a communist. Yes, product placement. Mm. You can product get placement. similar T-shirts, um, <laughs> no doubt, from, from everywhere else. Um, yeah. Are you romanticising a murderous ideology? No. Well, aren't you? No, I don't think so. I think that the, the way I look at um, the word communism is it, um, it is talking about a kind of society which is so qualitatively different to capitalism as capitalism was to feudalism. Hmm. which is to say that its key features within capitalism, having to sell your labour for a wage, production for profit, production for exchange, these things would no longer exist. Have we ever had a political economy, a polity, which didn't have those features? No, we haven't. So I'm not talking about actually existing socialism from the 80s, the 1990s. I'm talking about North Korea or the Soviet Union. Hmm. I'm talking about a politics which fits the technological possibilities which we're only just beginning to see most clearly in automation but I think elsewhere as well. It doesn't say that on the t-shirt of course. No. I think you probably just need a new word you know I feel like I'm sat in my A-level history <laughs> school you know and that's what most people think if you, if you say the word communism I looked at it on what we we're going to discuss today and I went what? I, 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 I totally get your, your, your arguments and your points but I think it's quite a, an alienating word to be using and, and brandishing. I'm, I'm happy with the, with the old <laughs> word that the, uh, communism means state control of the means of production, distribution and exchange. It means no private property. It's perfectly clear. Uh, as a theory, I happen to think that it's not workable, but it's internally coherent. The Soviet Union made a, a half attempt to, 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 to practice it, and, and, and that was unsuccessful. But it's, it's clear what Karl Marx meant. Right, but isn't it an ideology that led to mm. nine million <clears throat> deaths in, in, in the Soviet yes, Union? Yes, well, not, not, um, a, not a communist. No, no, but <laughs> when you say that you understand the, yeah. the sort of sentiment behind it, but is it trivialising what has been done in the name mm. of communism? Mm. I, I, well, I think that if you want to abolish private property and you do want the state to control virtually everything, then you are going to have to use brutal enforcement methods to, to make people cooperate. And so I think, I think the murders, the repression, the oppression hmm. are a necessary consequence of the communist ideology. Right. And you support that, do you? No, I don't. There was, a, there was a line in The Economist in 2011 that said, what happens when labour becomes capital? Mm. And of course, this is hinting towards change in automation, robotics. And that's a question which is really decisive for anybody who wants to defend market capitalism. In terms of what I think, mm. Capital by Karl Marx was called Capital or a Critique of Political Economy. He was critiquing the classical political economy of Ricardo, of Adam Smith. He wasn't saying, you know, I'm a big fan of Pol Pot, who, by the way, Henry Kissinger was. Right. You know, so I'm but, talking about... But in about... practice, does it mean violence? I mean, if you say... I mean, Mao Zedong said, based on the Soviet's experience, um, he considered violence necessary to achieve an mm. ideal society derived from Marxism yeah. and planned and executed violence on a grand scale, as we know. I don't believe communism, as in something beyond capitalism, mm. was even possible in the 20th century. So there's a, an analogue here is John Wycliffe, who was a, a heretical priest, 14th century Protestant. His ideas were more or less the same as Luther. They didn't scale in the 1400s like they would in the 1500s. Why not? The absence of the printing press. I think we're now at a moment where there are a presence of technologies which make new political realities plausible. Right, but is it provocative to have... I mean, I'm sure it is provocative to say I'm literally a, yeah. com a, a communist, I actually not an economist. It. Maybe that is provocative <laughs> too. Um, I mean, if there was a teacher that said I'm literally a national socialist, would yeah, that be acceptable? Or I'm literally a fascist. You can't imagine anyone going on national television and saying that, can you? I, mean, it's I don't a, know. It's just a ridiculous... <laughs> Who are you and thinking yet, of, Matthew? And yet people are, she's so proud of it. And I, I, I really don't think she understands the implications of what she says. It's ludicrous. Well, it's just people feel that it didn't work. And I th that's what I mean by a new word. People felt it didn't work. Yeah. And so when you hear it, that's why I said I felt like I was back at school being taught about how communism hadn't worked. So just, I understand what you're saying, but perhaps a, a new Mar word. Is it the same, though, as having I'm literally a national socialist or I'm literally a it fascist? Is. It's exactly it's the not. same. Like, for, same for, outcome. for instance, um, I wouldn't blame Adam Smith for the Bengal famine or for Cecil Rhodes in Zimbabwe. We're talking about a set of ideas which have been criticising capitalism in very specific ways. Marx talked about technological change in capitalism and the Grundrisse in 1858. So I think, actually, the words he uses are perfectly appropriate. I'm not going to say post-capitalism. We didn't call capitalism post-feudalism. It had a new name. So if we're therefore discussing around, you know, what, the branding, 
fine. But there is a clear intellectual heritage here which can be traced back to the ideas of Karl Marx. He called it communism. Right. I think Jeremy Corbyn would ever wear one of those T-shirts. No. But he's, not, he's also not... I don't agree with Jeremy, not, nor does Ash. Jeremy Corbyn isn't a communist. He's a... I'd, I'd say he's quite clearly in the tradition of democratic socialism, which, yes, within the Labour Party is quite radical. But I don't think he's a communist. No, of course Probably he's not. Probably 90% communist. I know, well, let's, let's I know, not go on the percentages. What are you, 90%? <laughs> I, I, I know plenty of people who are literally fascists, and uh, the, 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 they ought to be uh, encouraged to, to, to declare the fact and put it on a T-shirt so we'd know what we were dealing but, with. But is it more romanticised to say I'm literally a communist than it would be to say I'm literally a fascist? Well, you, you do have a very good point that communism, although it failed, and failed brutally with an enormous amount of, of bloodshed, still has a sort of mystique mm. Uh, mm, about it, mm, a kind of student che, che Guevara mystique about it. Mm. And that, I think, is because people who believe in the free market, as, as, as I do, haven't been robust enough in defending the things we believe in. All right. Well, look, who, who wants this T-shirt? Uh, um, I'll pass. Suzanne? It's not my colour. Not your colour. Um, maybe not your size. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it here, then, oh, well, um, well. on the side. Or do you want it back, Aaron? <laughs> no, no, you can have it. <laughs> I'll keep it here. By all means. I won't be wearing it.